So in this section, we will begin the instructional area of economics from the Business Administration Core. And on the right, you can see all the performance indicators that we will cover. So we will start with the performance element that deals with fundamental economic concepts. And we will begin by distinguishing between economic goods and services. So an economic good is something that's consumable or usable, while a economic service is something that does something for you. So the most simple way to distinguish between economic goods and services for the most part is that goods are tangible items while services are usually intangible. Next, we will explain the concept of economic resources. So resources are uh, all the things used in producing goods and services, and they're also finite things that companies need to run their business. So the three types of resources are natural resources like land, water, and oil, human resources like workers, and capital resources like money, machines, and goods. Um, another name for human resources is uh, labor. Most human resources pertain to some sort of labor that they provide. Next, we will describe the concepts of economics and economic activities. So economic systems, or an economy, is the organized way a nation provides for the needs and wants of its people. A nation chooses how to use its resources to produce and distribute goods and services. Countries with different economic systems have different approaches when making choices. A country's resources determine economic activities such as manufacturing, buying, selling, transporting, and investing. Broad categories of resources that, affect, that are uh, common to all nations affect how business is done across the world. And, you know, economic activities, again, the three main points of them are production, distribution, and consumption of goods and services at all levels within a society. So the next performance indicator is to determine economic utilities created by business activities. So utility basically means the added value of a product. So when something has this type of utility, it's adding that type of value when you purchase it. So the five types of utility that a product can give you is form, place, time, and possession. So form utility involves using raw materials to make a finished product. So you get a product in a different form than what the raw materials were, and that's why it creates form, value, or utility. Place utility involves having the product where the customer wishes to buy the product. So the added value is that you can have it where you want it. So the place is the value. Time utility refers to having the product when you want it. So the, t the added value has to do with time. Possession utility has to do with exchange of a product for money. So using credit and many types of payment to acquire a product is uh, known as possession utility. And information utility involves communicating with the customer. So that's information utility. Uh, the next performance indicator is to explain the principles of supply and demand. So here you can see um, the supply and demand curves. So the law of demand states that if all other factors remain equal, the higher the price of a good, uh, the less people will demand that good. So in other words, the higher the price, the lower the quantity demanded. The amount of a good that buyers purchase at a higher price is less because as the price of a good goes up, so does the opportunity cost of buying that good. As a result, people will naturally avoid buying a product that will force them to forego the consumption of something else they, they value more. So the chart below shows that the, this curve is a downward slope. Like the law of demand, the law of supply demonstrates the quantities that will be sold at a certain price, but unlike the law of demand, the supply relationship shows an upward slope. This means that the higher the price, the higher the quantity supplied, and this is because producers will supply more at a higher price since um, you know a higher price increases revenue. According to the demand relationship, as demand increases, so does the price, and consequently the rise in price should prompt more product to be supplied, as the supply relationship shows that the higher the price, the higher the quantity supplied. Now for the last performance indicator is to uh, describe the functions of prices in markets. So this is a lot, has a lot to do with just the supply and demand curves that I talked about earlier, but when you combine them into one graph, it kind of shows you how uh, as the price of an item goes up, the supply of it will go up because the, the suppliers want to make a lot of money and high, higher priced products will make more money, and the demand will go down because consumers want cheaper products. So those are, co those are two functions of prices in markets, supply and demand. And you can see here that supply, again, will go up with price and demand will go down 
with price as price increases. And in the center, you can see the equilibrium point. So the equilibrium point basically is a, a price point where the quantity demand and demanded and supply kind of meet in the middle. And that's usually what businesses aim to strive for when pricing their products. And that's the end of the first performance element from the economics instructional area.